I now give the floor to the distinguished representative of Austria. Thank you very much, Excellencies. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of Austria, I would like to express my credit to the United Nations Office for Disaster Risk Reduction for convening the first preparatory committee meeting of the World Conference on Disaster. Austria has built and maintained a culture of risk avoidance at all levels, from national to local, over the course of many years. We strongly believe in integrated disaster reduction approaches, multi-risk management, and forward-looking prevention. In Austria, the responsibility of managing and reducing risks, saving lives and livelihoods, is not confined to the national, state, and local governments and administration. Instead, it's a shared responsibility with other important and indispensable actors, such as the private sector, academia, and civil society. We've built a strong public-private partnerships and count on more than 500,000 volunteers in the field of disaster risk reduction and civil protection. The Austrians are therefore among the nations with the highest percentage of voluntary work the world over. Acting locally is of utmost concern, as local level is in the front line of every disaster. Boosting capacities and creating a sense of risk, owner and stewardship is one of the priorities. The nexus between disaster risk reduction and climate change adaptation is indisputable, and we have been working hard on the convergence between these two concepts and communities. Last year, the Austrian government has adopted its national climate change adaptation strategy, which acknowledges this fact, and all of our state governments are either in the process of developing adaptation plans or have already done so. Over the past years, Austria's level of engagement with regard to ISDR has significantly increased. Given the scope of this statement, I would like to highlight two perspectives. First, one of our federal provinces, the Tyrol, together with its 279 municipalities, has become a main partner in the Making Cities Resilient campaign. Second, the new framework should build on experience gained since 2005, maintain its basic structure, and keep its general strategic objectives. The overall architecture of the HFA, which covers the full disaster management cycle, should remain in place, but should be more concentrated on key elements. Priorities for action should be focused more specifically on the already existing and some new key activities and targets. It appears, for instance, that worldwide high importance is still given to response to disasters than to prevention and reduction of the underlying risk factors. A renewed HFA should therefore have an even stronger focus and give even higher priority to reducing risks and the underlying factors. Minimum standards for risk management within the HFA could, for instance, be taken under further consideration to meet this objective. The practical tools for implementation and progress monitoring, like the indicators for the assessment of progress, need further consideration and consolidation in the light of the experience of the past 10 years. These indicators give a valuable oversight of national gaps and deficiencies and are a basis for setting priorities of actions and measures. A rather limited set of not overlapping, transparent and easily understandable indicators would be desirable. They should be adaptable and scalable to the needs of countries and be applicable without creating too much and too many administrative burdens. Austria mainly supports the goal of building better local resilience and strengthening the capacity of local communities and households to reduce disaster risks. Experience worldwide shows that individuals are the real first responders in case of disaster and usually take immediate action. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I thank the distinguished representative of Austria.